Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Hello, hello. Ramadan Mubarak. Um, some of you on the East Coast are probably just uh, having a thar. And um, I'm still kind of preparing, but I really wanted to do something um, to talk about a few things, Ramadan cooking and the Global Culinary Traditions Project um, before it gets too late and before it gets really busy in the rest of the week. Um, so I did some grocery shopping today and I just had a lot of fun finding some new things that uh, or new to me things that I thought would be interesting. So if you check out my Instagram, you'll see that. Um, but then I thought, well, it was be, it'd be such a great opportunity to talk to you guys about some of the prep uh, work that I do, some of the ingredients that I get that really helps me throughout the month. I have to say this year, I didn't do too much before Ramadan, uh, just because I feel like I'm I'm so used to it. And I've, I've gotten really organized in my kitchen in the last few months. So I was kind of ready in a way. Um, hi. Who is that? I can't read. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to read the comments. Um, my eyes are going funny in this light here in the kitchen. Um, anyway, okay, thank you guys for joining. Um, usually I'm with other people doing interviews, but now I'm trying to do some stuff, just talking to everybody one-to-one. Um, -one. So uh, let's get started. So I wanna talk first about the Global Culinary Traditions Project because it's something that I decided to do to, to try to encourage everybody to, um, share your recipes and your stories from your own culinary traditions and your backgrounds. Because I find that, well, it doesn't have to be just for Ramadan, but I, I thought Ramadan would be a perfect time to do that because everybody likes to kind of have things that remind them of um, their families, their home, their home life, their childhood, um, or places that you've been and traveled to that you, you know, really remember and love. Um, and so Ramadan is that special time that we tend to make things that we don't normally make, right? You know, outside of Ramadan. So I thought it would be a good time to encourage you guys to um, submit recipes and that, that have a story behind them. And that kind of showcase either your own culture um, you know, maybe you married into a culture that is, you know, you learned a lot from, maybe you traveled to a certain place that, uh, the culture, the food that you really, it doesn't have to be a Muslim country or even a, you know, um, you know, anything related to a Ramadan dish. I just want to uh, have people share things that come from a culture that have a story behind them. For example, I was not raised, uh, Muslim, so I was not raised, uh, celebrating Ramadan and iftar but I have certain foods and uh, recipes that that go two ways one that remind me of any special um, occasion and that has to do with a lot of Italian foods um, you know certain dishes that we always had at parties or celebrations so that's something that will have a story behind it right or um Muslim countries I've been to, like Morocco was the first Muslim country I ever went to. And I, and I was there during Ramadan. So I remember certain foods and smells and things. I mean, there are recipes that remind me of that trip. So that's like, sort of something that's sort of the idea. Um, now, there's some books I think I can recommend to you guys. So let's say you don't want to talk about your own family or selves. You can just you can look at other cookbooks. So, for example, the Gaza Kitchen, excellent book on Palestinian food. You can look through this and see if there's anything that, you know, really interests you. Maybe you have a friend who's from these parts and you can talk to them and say, you know, um, do you have any ideas of what I could share? Do you have a story, you know, and, and, and if they allow you to submit it, that would be really cool. Um, there's for Turkish recipes. So some of you, like lots of you have been in Turkey and lived in Turkey. And uh, when I was there, I, I, I got to meet uh, Azla Moore and she's a, a Turkish woman from Antakya. And she came to Fethiye for a book uh, cookery event and I got to meet her and got her book. And uh, was it was so great because there were lots of recipes that I had been tasting and trying while I was in Turkey, but I didn't know what the exact things were, were in them. I didn't know, you know, what the, the measurements were. I didn't even know what some, sometimes I wouldn't even know what something was called because, you know, you're, you're going someplace and somebody feeds you something and you're like, oh, this is wonderful, but what is it? So I was going through her book and I'm like, oh, I've had this and I've had this and I've had that. So, um, you know, you can, uh, 
go through the book, make it, make the recipe yourself at, you know, tweak it how you like and submit the recipe. Or you can say, this isn't, this is a recipe from the cookbook as on the Turkish table, you know, so something like that. So just to give you guys some ideas. And I think there's one more book I really want to show you guys is this book called Feast, um, Food of the Islamic World. This is by Anissa Helu. And uh, this is like the most amazing cookbook because she goes through, um, recipes from around the Muslim world. I mean, if you want like a bread recipe, it's in here. If you want um, biryani, there's Emirati biryani, for example. I mean, you probably had it, like if you've been to, to places uh, in the Gulf, but you know, do you really know how to make, maybe you have a story that, you know, something that reminds you of your time there. Um, it's just, I think that uh, what I like to do is to sort of preserve recipes that um, come from our hearts and our souls and like things that really uh, remind us of good times and and uh, you'd like to share. And maybe you have those things in Ramadan and you can inspire other people to, to cook them as well. So that's that. Now let's get into a very colorful part of my day, which has to do with grocery shopping. Now, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see. Um, I brought home quite a bit of stuff um, and I wanted to tell you what I'm going to do with some of it, because this is my sort of Ramadan prep, uh, which I'm going to do for the rest of the month. Um, I got a really big container of yogurt. Why? I mean, I don't have a huge family or anything. It's so it's like, why would you get so much yogurt? Well, I'm going to make Labna, my own yogurt cheese. And the recipe is on my website. You get uh, cheesecloth and you uh, you'll see it on the website. But you're really just going to strain this yogurt over overnight. Uh, I learned a new method. Okay, so you can go to my website and see my method. But I recently learned a Turkish method, which is to wet the cloth first and then add the yogurt in it and then put leave it out for three hours and then put it uh, in, in the fridge for, you know, another five hours and then you make these little balls of it. Normally I don't make the balls of it. I just make the actual yogurt, um, or sorry, the actual cheese, the yogurt cheese. And then um, I spread it, I use it as a spread, which is fine. It's, it's excellent that way. But there's another way where you, uh, once the cheese is made, you roll it into balls, put it in a jar with olive oil, refrigerate it. And that's what I plan to do with this. So to be, to be continued, you will see this on the website eventually, inshallah. But that's one, that's one reason why I get the big tub. I probably won't use all of that for the cheese, but maybe a, you know three-fourths of it, and then the rest I'll use for yogurt because I try to have yogurt sometime part of my iftar or suhoor because it's just so great for the gut, and everybody's talking about the gut these days, but very, very important. Speaking of yogurt, um, <laughs> I get iron for certain meals that I'm making, um, not to cook with, but to eat with. So that's what I learned in Turkey. There were certain dishes that you you eat that um, just really go down well with ayran. Ayran is a yogurt drink. So certain dishes that have like a lot of spiciness in them, tomato, pepper, things like that. Uh, you have some ayran with it and it really goes down nicely. <laughs> uh, so that's really smart. But I plan on making something tonight that um, I haven't really thought it through completely, but uh, it's probably going to have pepper and tomato uh, in it. And I think that's, this is going to be the drink I'm going to have to have with that. So that's one thing I do. Um, so I do a lot of, I get a lot of my spices. If you guys go to Middle Eastern stores, ethnic stores, you know, they're awesome for their spices. You can get spices everywhere. But um, one of the, the things that I love to get is the Aleppo pepper. I find this in a a Rocky store nearby me. I'm in San Diego and there's a store called Harvest International and they're really good. They, they have uh, lots of different things, but I was able to find Aleppo pepper there and I really need it for my dish tonight. Of course, uh, turmeric. Now I want to say something about turmeric and that is that it should be really golden. You see this color? This is what turmeric should be. If it's like a, right, a, a light uh, yellow, it's not, it's not very good. So I get this one, and this is really inexpensive, three bucks, so not bad. Of course, I get bay leaves, and I don't just cook with them. I I got the bay leaves because I'm totally out. I had a whole bunch from Turkey that I brought back, and I'm actually from the bay leaf trees by my house. And anyway, I ran out because I use it so use them so much. But um, 
I will, I use a lot Bailey's for a lot of things. Uh, sometimes I just have Bailey tea. It's really nice for the stomach. Sometimes, um, of course, I cook with it. Italian cooking, we, you know, put it in our sauce. But also, um, I'm going to make a, a bone broth. And so I put um, bay leaf when, in my bone broth when it's cooking because I really like the flavor of that. Uh, another thing I get is fennel, fennel seeds. Fennel seeds because um, the only thing I really ever use fennel seeds for is I really don't, a lot of people put them in sausages and I don't really make sausages too much, like ever. Um, but I make tea all the time with fennel. It's so good after a meal that feels like uh, it's a little bit heavy and you kind of want to, you know, um, settle your stomach. Or if you just have a tummy ache or just feeling like, you know, like certain things just bloat you a little bit, fennel is the tea to make. So I just put a few, uh, a couple of tablespoons in a, you know, in a, when, in a, when I'm making like three, four cups of tea. So anyway, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, Let's see, what else do I have here? For, oh, pomegranate sauce, uh, molasses. I use this stuff for salads. Um, I need to post this recipe, but what I do, and it's something I also learned in Turkey, so delicious. Um, you can do this tonight if you're making a salad. Um, lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, salt and pepper, add a little bit of pomegranate uh, molasses, lemon juice, and olive oil. It is such a simple, simple taste, but very, very good. And it's not too sweet. So I used all of mine and now here I am. Uh, I used the one that I had brought from Turkey and now uh, I was able to find, they had like five or six different kinds at this store. So that's, it was really great. It was in section with all the other, like olive oil, it was in the olive oil and vinegar section. Um, when it comes to olive oil, let's speak about olive oil. I get the big ones from these international markets because they are so nice uh, and huge. And I love that they're in glass. Um, they tend to be a little cheaper than lots of other stores. Um, usually they, most of the ones that I have seen come from Lebanon and I just make sure that they are in like pure extra virgin olive oil, but the price is right. I mean, I have seen um, them fluctuate quite a bit and it's it's not too bad 23 bucks for the entire thing which is still pretty high but again i i use it uh like i use this mainly for salads and light frying but i don't really deep fry anything so please don't ask what i use to deep fry things in because i just don't deep fry anything <laughs> okay so that kind of goes here well now um i stock up on lentils because I make lentil soup quite a bit in Ramadan, and I know that's a thing for a lot of people, a lot of different cultures. Um, it's just such a light uh, soup on your stomach, and so I tend to make this quite a bit. I made brown lentil soup yesterday for the first iftar, and uh, I'm, I was I, almost out of my lentils, so I need to replace them with these. And I, I believe I have recipes for this on my website. Let's see, what else? Um, of course, olives. I go for some olives always, and not just Ramadan, but everyday life. <laughs> um, for snacks, I go with uh, pumpkin seeds and uh, sunflower seeds. I tend to not snack very much in Ramadan, but um, but I got them anyway because sometimes I might want to, and they're healthier than any other types of snacks. Although I'm not really a big snacker overall, but but if I do, I like those with tea and you know, watching a little something on TV. Um, okay, of course, lots of onions. I'm always using onions for cooking. I'll get into the veggies in a moment. Um, the Iraqi store <laughs> that I go to has the most amazing breads. So I I got these rounds of bread. Would you believe these are like under, a, they're under a dollar each, but they're nice, big, thick pitas. So if you find a store, Middle Eastern market, that is making the breads homemade there in front of you, like you can't resist it, right? Because it's just so delicious. I put it on my Instagram, like, can you smell the bread? Because you walk into the store and you, everything just smells amazing. It's just lovely. And they have all different shapes of breads. And they, got, they have these two that are kind of like remind me of simits, but they're not simits, they're thinner. But uh, they're like big bagels. Those would be good for, for Sahur. Um, let's see. 
And then um, these are things that I freeze. Okay, so I get the beef pies. Do you guys know what these? Every Middle Eastern market has. When I lived in Cleveland, near Cleveland, all the I used to go to the Syrian and Lebanese shops there too because they make these and they smell amazing. They'll make them with they're like little pizzas, but they they make them with cheese or uh, spinach or meat. And what I do is I I buy them, but then I freeze them. So if I'm uh, really busy one day. <clears throat> for iftar or even there for suhoor like if i just don't have anything prepared uh i can just pull one out and you know have it and so it just makes life easier so they're 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 homemade there in the store so it's great for me to have you know if i don't have anything made for myself yet um <laughs> i'm going to show you guys a couple of other things that i got that so i'm freezing a lot of this stuff for the rest of the month uh, this might not be enough for a big family but it's enough for me so I talk a lot about organ meats with you guys, but I haven't uh, made showed too many recipes yet. Um, this particular store that I go to, um, let me get a towel. Particular store that I go to sells a lot of organ meats. These are I'm not going to open the whole thing, but these are chicken hearts. They sell chicken livers. They sell lamb hearts, lamb livers. They sell tripe. Uh, the intestines, the stomach, the head, <laughs> and the bones of the cow. Uh, but these are really healthy. I mean, this entire thing was $2.49. It's so inexpensive. Um, of course, I'm going to freeze it, but I will partial it out, uh, portion it out because I will only have a few of these at a time. But they're really good. Like for suhoor, um, you know, organ meats are, are really healthy. So I will do that. Um, and I also got bones. Um, these are beef bones, which I will use to make broth. So I got three of these. Uh, the paper is coming off. I got three of these, and I will make uh, a nice big batch of, not a huge batch. I'll probably use one of these just for a, a batch of broth just for myself. So I'll freeze the other two. And this was really inexpensive as well. I believe they were $179 a pound. So that's really excellent price for, you know, bang for your buck. Now, um, what else? Also at the Middle Eastern stores, a lot of them, the halal markets, Middle Eastern stores, if you look at the bins where they, they sell things in bulk, you can find a lot of really interesting things too. That's where I found my lentils. Um, I found uh, farina. So there's a recipe. Oh, that's what I should tell you guys. So there's a recipe in this cookbook that, uh, what did I do? Oh, here it is. There's a cookbook that I follow, or I am following more and more now. It's called Ramazan Lezetlere. You cannot find it in the U.S., only in Turkey. And this was, this was my friend's it was at my friend's family's store and I saw it and I, I, you know, they just, they gave it to me like, because I was interested and I said, well, I just, I just thought it was so fascinating, but it was in Turkish and I don't, at the time did not understand Turkish. Um, that was a few years later, a few years ago. Now I'm uh, studying it and going through it with a, with a tutor and she's helping me to understand what everything means. And so I have found a couple of really cool recipes, a lot, well, not a couple, so many, like look at the tabs. Anyway, um, there are, there's a, a couple of dessert recipes that I want to try. So there's one in here uh, called Halva Hakkani. Have you guys ever heard of this? It looks like this. So it's, I don't know if you can see it. I'll have to, I'll have to blog about it later. But um, it basically has a rice flour and farina in it, and then you you put some nuts at the top. But anyway, that's the book I'm looking at. So I thought, well, I don't remember the last time I've seen. I know there's rice flour in lots of stores, but like I didn't think I'd ever seen it at a Middle Eastern market. I thought, oh, I don't hope I don't have to go to another store for that because I just I like the one stop shop if I have to. But they did. If you, so if you go into the bulk section of the store, the bins, they have um, they have beans. They have like like your 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 um, what do you call it? Your um, fava beans. They have your lentils. So I got you know, the bag of lentils in there, too. They're usually cheaper than buying them in the boxes. So anyway, I got farina and 
345, 365. Yeah, not, not the cheapest, but um, also this is rice flour. So that was great. Otherwise, I'm going to have to put the rice in my spice grinder and do it myself, which is doable. But it was there and it was cheap, so I got it. So I have the ingredients to make my dessert. I'm really, really happy about that. Um, okay. So then when it comes to the fat, fresh stuff, that's where we get kind of, you know, tripped up, right? Because it's okay to, like, have all these things and you put them away and they don't go bad. But what about all the other stuff? Well, we're going to have to take more trips to the grocery store for fresh things because you have to incorporate freshness into your diet, right? So for me, what I tend to do, particularly in Ramadan, is I try to get things um, that I, I don't want to think too hard about what I'm making. I want to make things that are kind of, I mean, not so novel all the time. Okay, a dessert here and there is fine, but I want to make things that kind of go like clockwork because I'm tired. You know, at the, you know, by the time I get into the kitchen, it's like, I don't want to spend too much work, too much time, honestly. Um, so I go with things that I know what to do with them. You know, like I can be talking and I can just cook and I won't have to pay attention to too many instructions or whatever. Things that I know that are familiar. That's why I got a bunch of uh, eggplant and I'm going to make... Uh, like stuffed eggplants. I'm going to make um, maybe dolmas. I'm going to make uh, imam bialdi and carnianic, which is the, the eggplant that you open up and you stuff it with meat. Um, I have a recipe on my website for that. So things like that. I get lots of peppers because I tend to I tend to uh, grill these or put them on the stove on the top of the flame. Well, I don't have a flame, but um, I get them brown, peel them. That's a little bit of work, but I like the smell. And I like making roasted pepper salads or, you know, just serving roasted peppers with, you know, other parts of my meal. So that's, that's kind of what I do. And that lasts a while. So once, um, once the peppers are roasted, you know, they're good in some olive oil for a little bit in the fridge. Of course, tomatoes, celery. Um, you know, that's the other thing that the store had these like tiny little garlics, which are really nice. I, I don't, they didn't say that they're California garlic, but um, they have like a little bit of purple in them. They kind of remind me of the Italian ones. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, very pungent. So small is good when it comes to garlic. Uh, my store also had a nice surprise, but it's the season. They had raw almonds. You guys can see them. And one thing my Turkish tutor told me was that um, they serve these with ice in Turkey. And I didn't, I've never seen it like that in Turkey. I, I just saw the raw almonds. So I was interested. Does anybody, any of you, do you, have you had them with ice on the side and why do they do that? I mean, I guess it's to keep them fresh, obviously, but it's just interesting because I had not seen that in Turkey. Um, okay. Then you've also, you've always got to have your fresh stuff, right? Fresh herbs make everything better. They make dishes prettier. They, just brighten up the plate, but also very healthy for you. Um, my parsley is not growing very much. It's really cold here, believe it or not, in Southern California. So nothing is uh, nothing is growing except like spring onions and things like that and salads. Uh, so I got some dill because I will use dill in yogurt. I will use, but you have to use it up fast. That's the thing. I What I do is, I'll tell you, I get a glass of water. I use filtered water for this if you need to. And I sort of make like a bouquet. I make a bouquet. And I put this in the fridge. My aunt taught me this trick when I was much younger. And it works. So they they just stay fresher this way. And uh, don't I've done it on the counter too, but they don't last as long. So do this with the dill. Do this with the parsley. And... What else? Now this is um, purslane. Purslane grows in like Mediterranean climate. So here we are, we have lots of this here. Very fresh. I mean, it grows everywhere in Mediterranean climate. So really inexpensive it should be. It's $1.49 a bunch, which is whatever. 
but it's uh, probably a little expensive for something that grows everywhere. But basically, you want to use the leaves uh, in salads. So um, there's other ways, I'm sure, maybe you guys can share ways that you use personally. But I got used to this in Turkey because it was everywhere too, over there in the markets every all the time. Um, but just really very good for you. Um, it doesn't have a lot of taste, I think, but, uh, but it's like adding a green to your, to your, to your salads and, uh, it doesn't really have a smell either. So in a way it's kind of like, you know, if you're, if you're reluctant to put lots of different greens that you don't know about, uh, just do it because it's going to be healthier for you. And it adds a lot of fiber and stuff to your diet, but, um, it makes everything pretty too. I like that. And this, I have to say, honestly, guys, I don't know what I picked up. I have no idea what this is. There was The sign was in Arabic, and I don't remember it. I, I didn't take a picture. <laughs> but it doesn't smell. It's not watercress. I really don't know what this is. But I bought it because I know it's a green that I'm going to make salad. I'm going to put it in my salad. I'm going to chop it all up. I'm not going to cook it. Um, cause it was in that section of herbs and stuff, but if you guys know what this is, you know, please tell me, can you see like, what in the world is this, but it's nice and fresh because it was nice and fresh and pretty. I said, you know, I, it's something I should probably eat. And I do that sometimes. And um, it's fine, you know, experiment a little. And I'm happy when I find something new at the grocery store, because it seems like, you know, when you go to stores and like, everything's the same all the time, there's nothing, um, everything's boxed up. I don't know. I just don't have the same oomph to go and like eat it. You know, I like those stores where everything is sort of out. And I know with the pandemic, that's hard. But now that, it, you know, it's different. But, you know, the feeling of going to a bazaar, a bazaar, a food market, um, it sparks joy for me. <laughs> it just makes me happy. It makes me feel alive. You know, when you, you see other alive things and then you you feel more inclined to uh, to enjoy them, to use them, to not waste them. And, uh, um, it just, it's just a really good feeling to bring that home and feel like, you know, these are things that are going to nourish you and they're not wasted things. They're not like, you know, just going to sit there and collect dust. And, um, it's an investment in your, your health and your body is an amana on you. So, and on me, my body is an amana on me. That's a trust. So we have to take care of it. And uh, Ramadan is the greatest time to do that. So, Anyway, guys, I have talked long enough. I don't think anybody had any questions, but you guys have been nice, so nice enough to tell me where you're coming from. Oh, from the Philippines. Uh, Casa? I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time seeing. Uh, Ismail? Oh, presentation is awesome. Oh, thank you. And you're coming from Sri Lanka. Wow. Wow. Are you guys um, who are overseas, are you um, a Nuruddin? How are you? Thank you. So that's why they come. Um, are you guys done fasting now, or what's what's the time there? You, you're probably having sahur. I don't know what the time is in Sri Lanka or the Philippines, but I uh, wish you guys all a Ramadan Mubarak and uh, keep eating healthy and uh, don't stress too much about the cooking. Just uh, take it easy. Eat what's fresh, you know. And Allah puts barakah in even the smallest amounts, as long as it, we are, um, you know, doing our duas, our prayers, and, and um, you know, just being grateful for what we have. So I think I'm ready for a nap, to be honest. So I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to go and put all this away and rest a little bit, and then wake up and uh, cook a little bit of, for my iftar. And... Um, then that's it. Call it a day. Tomorrow's another day. All right, you guys, take care. And uh, I'll see you this week. We have actually a few um, interesting things coming up. So be sure to subscribe to my newsletter at myhalalkitchen.com. At the top of the top right hand corner, there's a section where you can sign up for my newsletter. If you're watching the replay here, you can uh, and on YouTube, please uh, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell for updates whenever I get uh, a new video coming in. And what else do I want to tell you? Please share the video. Please share this if you're watching it live or if you're watching the replay. All right, guys, thank you so much and uh, see you soon. Assalamu alaikum.